In this video, we're going to go over how to determine how many vowels are in a C string. So let's make a C string. We're going to say car S1 is equal to, and we'll say, it's a wonderful life. We'll be positive here. It's a wonderful life. And then what we're going to do is we're going to want to count the number of vowels in the string. And you've got like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven vowels. We're not going to count Y as a vowel. We're going to say our vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Now, the only thing we do got to worry about a little bit, though, is this, this capital letter here. So there could be capital letters and there could be lowercase letters. And we want to account for both capital and lowercase vowels. So let's first make a count variable to keep track of the number of vowels that we count. And then our algorithm is going to be a loop that's going to go through our string one character at a time, checking to see if that character is a vowel or not. If it's a vowel, it's going to increment the count. If it's not a vowel, it's going to do nothing. And then by the time we reach the end of the string, we'll have counted all the vowels. Now, in order for our, our loop to know how many times it has to execute, in other words, how many indexes in this array it has to check, we're going to want to know the length of the string. So we're going to include a helpful library here, string.h, that includes a function called string length. And string length is going to return the length of the string. So we're going to say int i is equal to zero, i is less than str or str len and then s1 and then i plus plus and so that's the string length function there str len and what we're going to do is we're going to then check each character to see if it is a vowel and then if it is we're going to increment count and i is going to be our index into the array here and we're going to increment it every time that we go through this loop until we reach the length of the string and then we're done so the one problem we got though is this, we have that uppercase lowercase issue. Now to solve that, what I'm going to do is I don't want to have a bunch of checks. I don't want to have like double the checks. I don't want to check for lowercase I and uppercase I lowercase a and uppercase a and lowercase, you know, O and uppercase O. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include another library called C type. Now C type has a method in it called to upper. It's also got a method to lower as well, but what to upper will do is it'll convert the character to an uppercase character. So before I check each character, I'm going to convert it to an uppercase character. So here I'm saying, get the character at the current index that we're examining in the array. So like this character, then this character, and this character, and this character. And what two upper is going to do is it's going to turn it into an uppercase character. So if it's, if it's a lowercase character, it turns it into an uppercase character. And then I only have to check for uppercase vowels, and that's it. So I've kind of halved the number of checks that I have to do. So I'm going to say switch to upper, and I'm gonna use a switch to solve this problem. And I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have all the cases that it could be for a vowel. So I'm gonna say case A, case E, case I, case O, and case U. And then I'm gonna say here, count plus plus. So what I'm using here is what's called fall through logic. So what, what the way that the switch works is it's going to check this character here and we're going to turn it into an uppercase character. And if a case here matches the character, then it's going to essentially run the code below that case. So if we have case U here, it's going to run count plus plus and it's going to increment the count. Now for all these other cases here, case A, case E, case I, case O, it's going to use what's called fall through logic. And the way fall through logic works in a switch is that oftentimes in a switch, you'll see some kind of logic like this. It'll say like maybe something like this, count plus plus and then break. And the way it works is that let's say it did match for a count would be incremented and then a break statement would normally bring execution down here below the switch. But what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called fall through logic. And the way that fall through logic works is that once there's a matching case in the switch, execution will actually continue down the body of the switch, running any statements underneath any cases it encounters until a break is encountered, if a break is encountered at all. And so the way it's going to work is that if case A here matches, or case E, or case I, or case O matches, logic just falls through, control flow just falls through, it's called, and it's going to execute any statements that it encounters 
underneath any cases along the way. In this case here, it's going to execute this count plus plus statement, regardless of whether it's case A that matches, case E that matches, or case I that matches, or case O that matches, because there is no break statement. There's no break statement underneath any one of these to make it actually stop executing switch statements and start executing down here again beneath the switch. And because there's no break, whichever one it matches, control flow is gonna keep, is gonna fall through, it's gonna increment count, and it's gonna work for regardless of whichever vowel it is. And so once we've done this, we'll actually have counted all the vowels in the string. So we could actually just say here, print F, and we're gonna say here, vowel count, percent D slash N, and we'll output the count. Okay, so we'll try this out. Run this here, and we get a vowel count of seven. That, that makes sense, that's what we said here, right? Because like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now the one thing we might wanna do is we might wanna put this into a function, so that way we can count vowels of any string wherever we want in our program just by calling a function. So it won't be too bad to make this a function because we've already got the logic worked out. We just need to make the function that wraps it up now. So we're gonna say here, we'll say int vowel count, and we'll say car, and then we'll say star s. Then we'll copy this function declaration down here, and we'll make our function definition. And we'll actually just copy our logic here because it's going to be essentially the same thing, just inside a function body. So what we'll do is I called my string here S instead of S1, just because it's a more general name. S1 is kind of like more particular. And I'll just actually change that to S then now. And because we want to return the count, I'm going to say here return count because I want to return the actual count from the function. So then what I should be able to do now is call this function wherever I want to count the vowels inside a string. So let's actually try to count the vowels of this string here. We're going to say int S1 count is equal to, and we'll say vowel count, S1. And then let's try to print out the, the, the S1 vowel count. Okay. Run this here, and we get an S1 vowel count of seven. And all that's happened now is that we've got our function that's carrying out the exact same logic as before. Really the only difference is that we're returning count now, because we need to return the int from the function. And we are, you know, we called this the string S to make it more general than S1, which is a bit more of a specific name. And I mean, this here, car star S, um, that's how we can pass a string to a, a function like this. And, and you know, we, we've just passed a string to the function. And so, you know, now we have this general vowel count function that we can use whatever we want. So we can count vowels in different strings. So I could say like car S2 is equal to Luke, I am your father. And we'll do S2 count now. We'll say S2 count is equal to vowel count of S2. And then we'll print out the S2 vowel count. So we'll just test it with a different, different thing here. We'll say S2 count. And by the way, that's not the actual quote. It's no, I am your father, I believe. But this is kind of like the famous misquote, but we'll go with it anyways because that's the one people know. Um, so we'll run this here, and we got a vowel count of eight. Now, is that accurate? Let's just check. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, so that seems accurate. One thing we might wanna do is we wanna test that it's actually working with every uppercase and lowercase vowel character. So we could say like car S3, and just do a check that doesn't work with like uppercase A, lowercase A, uppercase E, lowercase E, uppercase I, lowercase I, uppercase O, lowercase O, uppercase U, lowercase U, and just do a quick check of this, just to make sure that it's, it's working with like all of those potential vowel, vowels there. So we should get like 10 here, because we've got all 10 possibilities. And we're just doing a check that it's going to work with all 10 of those possibilities. So we'll say S3, S3 count, and we'll just do a check on this one. And we expect 10 for this one. And we get 10, so we're happy and we're confident our function is working correctly. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.